This should be played at high volume, preferably in a residential area. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. One, two, three. Lovely. What's going on, listeners? It is Thursday at 7 p.m., and I think it might be time for the Moss Street Edition here on Facebook Live. Cheesy radio announcer voice coming at you. <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> it's just the perfect tone for tonight's show. <laughs> good evening. Oh, good evening, everybody. Welcome to the Mass Street Edition. Hello, hello, hello. <laughs> we are back. It's Thursday again. Where are we ever uh, gone? Tracy, We're Matt, there. Jason, and myself, Joe. Yes. How is everybody? We're Drunk. well. Dr- Drunk or dry, did you say? A bit of both. <laughs> Right, fantastic. Actually, a tip for our listeners. It's really heavy rain here. Yes. We at the Maastricht edition are never dry. No, we're not, indeed. In fact, cheers. That's not a euphemism. (laughs) Yes. Actually, we would would recommend to getting yourself a little tipple of of, of your choice and joining us. Join us, come and join us. (laughs) Well, Karen's already joined us. Hello, Karen. Nice to see you. Hello, Karen. Excellent. How are you? Um, and Katerina as well. Hello, Katerina. They're Hello. flooding in already. I hope you've got a little drink as well. Yeah, you might need one. Because you're going <laughs> to need it to get through this. <laughs> <laughs> oh, dear, oh, dear. Penny in Spain's joined us. Good evening, Penny. Hola. Hola, indeed, yeah. That was, that was a really good Spanish accent there. <laughs> buenos noches. Oh, buenos tardes. Actually, it's still evening. Fluent. Yes. I- <laughs> it's the same time as here. <laughs> that's, that's what I mean. <laughs> I'm getting confused. I haven't been out much recently. You know. <laughs> yeah, you really can't use the term you should get out more. You just can't do that. No. <laughs> no. <laughs> Some of the but things- this evening, we're going to be joined by uh, somebody who's going to be encouraging us to go out more, actually, because uh, oh. the lovely Lucy and Katerina from Meet Maastricht are going to be joining us uh, later on in the show. Um, and they're going to be telling us about all their lovely tours that yes. they have going on around uh, the city of Maastricht mm-hmm. and also about their podcast. So if you don't yeah. actually want to get out, then you can actually stay at home and listen to the fantastic podcast. Yeah. It tells you all about the history of the city, all stuff that's been going on. It's brilliant. Very good. Absolutely, absolutely brilliant. Yes, really, really cool. Yeah. Matt, Matt loves history, don't you, Matt? I do love history. I've not actually started listening to the podcast yet, but I've been meaning to. Because when I was in Maastricht, I did a lot of reading about the history. So mm-hmm. as I'm sure I'll be very interested to listen. But they're ever so good. I've, I've listened to two or three of the podcasts. They're very zippy and sharp, well edited, good quality, and very informative. Our Lucy, she knows her stuff. Hey. She does know her stuff. Yes. And she will, she will be joining us later. So if anybody's got any questions at all uh, that they would like to uh, ask Lucy about uh, the history of Maastricht, um, go for it. I mean, she, she literally knows everything. So you can put her on the spot. It's, it's you can, yes, she's going to be really pleased that I said that. <laughs> I'm really pleased that you said put her on the spot. That's fantastic. <laughs> we take care of our guests. How's everybody's week been? Have you done anything exciting, guys, this week? I went on a long cycle ride. Ah. How long is long? Uh, Three meters. An hour and a half. Ooh, That's long. Yeah. Each, each way. I went each to way? Help. Each way, yeah. Wow. My, my bum is still sore. I'm just going to tell you that. Oh, good to know. <laughs> good Cheers. to know. Cheers to my you thumb. <laughs> I'm going to mute Joe for a second. <laughs> I'm, ki- I'm kidding. Yeah, yeah, stop it. I haven't muted you yet. <laughs> Speaking a barrage of adult jokes from the top left corner there. <laughs> she's, size. she's been very good this evening, aren't I, Joe? Uh, surprisingly. Yes, well, stick, stick around for stick around for the latter part of the show where she turns a little uh, more blue. So yeah, we, we stayed there for the second half. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I don't know what you mean, and I'm sure our listeners don't know what you mean. Not at all. <laughs> but where, where exactly did you uh, did you ride, Matt? I went to Helmond, which is a town nearby Eindhoven, okay. and there's a big castle there. Oh, nice! Mm. So that was interesting. Was it was it busy? It was quite busy, and apparently nobody there uh, pays attention to the one and a half meter rule, because everybody was. Well, I went to the one of these. I went to Blocker, mm-hmm. um, as you do, because it was a big. 
Yeah. Yes. I was like, ooh, a big blocker. Let's go. A big also, blocker. I need to get, I need to get out more too. Because, yeah. <laughs> and then there's this rule in blocker that you have to, everyone has to take a basket. Yes. Even if there's more than one of you, you all have to take a basket. The number of people who got told off and then were really annoyed about being told off. It was, oh. Yeah, this is a new rule. They also have it in Hema, Crowdvad. You have to take a basket, even if you're with someone who has a basket, yeah. you, or you're just buying a tube of toothpaste. <laughs> you just have to put it in the basket. So, mm -hmm. yes. But, I mean, it's not that difficult. You just have to carry a plastic basket. I mean, it's yes. not that much of a hassle. But people are having such a fuss about it. They're like, oh, just carry the basket. <laughs> I think for the people who are who may be going into a shop who are just window shopping, as it were, just having a browse, then they, they sort of kind of, why should I take a basket? I'm not planning on buying anything. Mm -hmm. And then, of course, because you've got a basket, you probably will end up buying something. You end up walking out with a washing machine or something. You know. <laughs> could you, could you, could you educate the ignorant American here, because, I mean, I, I don't go out at all. Why? <laughs> we haven't got enough time. <laughs> well, I know. Well, right. Okay. But on this one thing, <laughs> why, why, are, why are we taking a basket? Why is it mandatory? Matt, oh, that's... Because there's not only a certain number of people allowed in the shop and they have that number of baskets available. Though I would add that's never true in practice, I feel. Right. Oh, I thought it was so so that if you felt anybody was getting too close to you, you bash them around the head with your basket. <laughs> you can right. do that too. Or you can ram them with your trolley. We don't encourage that here on the show, Joe. No. But can no. I, can I, I just made up a joke. Can I share okay. it? Oh, here we go. <laughs> so... Matthew just said it's mandatory to have a basket, and in Dutch, a basket is called a mand. Mandatory. Cross-cultural <laughs> joke there. Oh no! I'm branching out. Any better than that? So no. that's it. Game over. I do have one more for later, but I'll save that for you. Oh, brace yourselves, everybody. <laughs> Regan's just joined us from the UK. Hi, Regan. Hello. And Mark, who's uh, Hello. just round the corner from you, Tracy. He's uh, he's joined us as well. And Karina. Hello, Karina. Hello, nice Karina. To see you Welcome all. to everybody. Yeah. Yes. Hello, yes. everybody. Welcome, one and all. Bienvenue. Yeah. Welcome in. Guys, and what about you, Tracy? What have you been up to this week? Well, I was also quite sporty and I went out for a hike through the woods last weekend. So Dave and I went out very early on Saturday morning with cameras and my new binoculars. I oh. called, I've called them Binky. <laughs> I bet your neighbours are really pleased that you've got new binoculars. <laughs> if only they knew. I know. I, I just use it for bird watching. But we I went out. Like, yes, I know. And ladybugs, yes. We went I to buy. That's what I said. Which, uh, <laughs> I heard ladybugs. You, I don't know what you said. You, though, heard, you heard what you wanted to hear. That's. <laughs> Mm, it's a clean show, this one. You oh, see, sure. it's all going down. It's going downhill already. But it was ever, ever so lovely. We did an 11-kilometer walk through the woods. Oh, wow. um, we started off, went up, up through the forest on the path and went here and there. Then we stopped and had breakfast, which was lovely. And then we came back the other way and did a sort of a loop and had a beer at the end. I'm telling you, a beer never tastes so good than after an 11-kilometer walk. <laughs> it was so nice. Or before. Lovely. Or during. Or but we started at 8 a.m., so it was a little early. Yeah. Hey, oh, you were having a beer at 8 a.m. That's no. shocking. Hey, don't. Shocking. No shame. No shame. This is we don't shame people here. No, that's true. But John's it was very nice. Us. Hi, John. He's in the Hello, UK. John. Ah, very nice. Yes. So cool. I also want to point out, though, Tracy, that you actually on on the escapades of the show here, you actually share a lot of those photos on our Instagram page, do you not? I share some, yes, indeed. In fact, I shared one during the week about from the Kikut, which is out in St. Petersburg, where you can go and watch owls and things and stuff like that. So, yes. Ooh, ooh, yes. Oh, no. So the thing is, all the activities that we're talking about here and the things that we do when we actually do get out of the house are actually advertised uh, through the Maastricht Edition yeah. Instagram page. Indeed. Well done, dear. Ooh, ooh, to you too, dear. Don't ever mention those owls again. Yeah. <laughs> no. Okay, it's a banned word here. We're not allowed to mention the word owl. I'm ooh. making this. You know, you see? Because this is what happens. If anyone's, <laughs> tuning, in, if anyone's is... tuning in for the first time, <laughs> they're going, what? They should... I think this is okay. actually the part where I head in the background and leave the show to you guys, but uh, I'll see you uh -oh. later. 
Okay, Jason. <laughs> He's oh. going off to twiddle with his knobs. Oh, he does, and he does it so well. <laughs> yeah, he does it, it in private. <laughs> well, that's why he goes off camera, you see. Yes. Yes. We don't actually know what he does, really. We say that he's twiddling with his knobs. We don't really know what's going on. Behind the scenes, do we? He's, he's, he's putting. He's just putting interesting subtitles under our na- our faces. That's, That's what he's doing. Yeah. yeah, we need to, we need to take uh, note of that. But Matt, you're looking uh, very handsome this week. Oh, am I? Thank you. I was going to say, he's really become this kind of funky European chap with his sunglasses on inside during the <laughs> rain. Yeah. They're quite functional because if I don't, then the hair holds my face. Ah, yeah. <laughs> I remarked earlier, we, Matthew's hair is just fabulous. I really think he looks like one of these wonderful European tennis players at the moment. He's got that kind of look, don't you think? Uh, are, you, are you any good at tennis, Matt? No, I've played tennis once. You look any, like... Are you any good at any kind of ball games? No, not really. <laughs> You see? Look at look at that. Oh. Look at his face. <laughs> what have you been up to this week, Joe? Well, while you've been cycling around the country and Tracy, you've been walking around the country, I've been demolishing the country oh. because I am still hedge trimming, chainsawing, cutting down, chipping, digging up. I am I, I tell you what, uh, I don't need any spinach because the the, the <laughs> oh my god. It's uh, yeah, and uh, it's okay when it's cool, but when the when the sun's on me, I I, I last about an hour, and then literally it's just like someone's poured a bucket of water over me, and I go dripping into the house, Lovely. stand in the kitchen, drip all over the floor, cool down a bit, and then go back out and start all that over again. <laughs> but it it's uh, the driveway at the moment uh, looks like Armageddon. It really does. Wow. <laughs> We won't be visiting Joe anytime soon. Well, well, you you can come and visit because actually, as I made a big announcement earlier on Facebook, our uh, famous cherry tree that mm. stands in uh, in with the goats in the back garden um, is uh, ready for harvesting. It is. Oh, uh, right. It's cherry picking week, and um, it could this tree for those of you who don't know about my cherry tree i have a tree that probably could if we could actually harvest all the cherries give us approximately about 500 kilos four four to 500 kilos of of cherries i mean it's it's magnificent this tree and this year is a particularly good year um we can only access probably about 120 maybe 130 kilos because after that you need to be a monkey to actually get up even with ladders it's it's still so big this tree so i've put a shout out to to everybody uh on my facebook page saying come come and gather your cherries come harvest come pick one and all come here uh, mm. so because it's, it's in with the goats so you can come and hang out with the goats pick some cherries and you can socially distance while you're doing it uh, because there's lots and lots of space but you can do this by accessing the drive Way. Now, under normal circumstances, you could actually skip down the driveway. Not at the moment. You will have to climb over debris, shall we say. <laughs> but yes, that's the way to do it. You can walk through the driveway, get to the garden, pick your cherries and enjoy. And toddle off. I do yes. like it. And if you want to cut down a tree on the way out, you're more than welcome. That's absolutely fine. <laughs> Pay them for the cherries. There you go. And people could visit Charlie the Chipper and say hello. Charlie the Chipper. Um, you love him, don't you? <laughs> yes. <laughs> oh, I love Charlie the Chipper. Let's, let's pause for Charlie the Chipper. You know, we love him. Oh, yeah. no, Bless him. Charles the Fry Maker. No, Charlie no. the Chipper. Okay. Don't, don't try and taint him. I do stroke him on a regular basis. He likes right. to be stroked. Does he now? Well, he does. Right. Welcome our uh, new viewers. We're coming into this conversation without context. Exactly. Yeah, it's that kind of show. Who knows? Um, Katerina says, yes. Matt, that you look like yeah. Sitsipas. What's that? Who? <laughs> Matt Gorgons. Oh, that's the new name. He, that, I see. So if you were a tennis player, uh, Matt, Jason reckons you look like Matt Bjorgensen. Uh, but Katarina says you look yeah. like Sipsy Pass. Now, I don't know who that is. I assume it's I, a tennis player. 
How do you spell it, Joe? Oh, he's a, he's a Greek tennis player. What, Sisyphus? Oh, maybe <laughs> Are you saying Sisyphus? No. Sisyphus? Did you say no. Sisyphus? No, he didn't. <laughs> Adam's just joined us just as we were talking about syphilis. Fabulous. <laughs> Hello, Adam. Hello. <laughs> and I'm, I'm not actually putting a connection there at all. Um, no. but good, good evening, Adam. Nice of you to join us. Okay. Welcome so, to the um, chaos. I think, Matt, you need to take up tennis. I would love to take up tennis. You I look practically good at tennis. I've never actually done it. Well, uh, I used to play a lot when I was younger. I, I absolutely uh, love tennis. I really did. I wasn't very good at it, but I was. I used to love uh, playing it. Mm. But there you go. Anyway, yes. so that, that was my week. I've been chopping, chipping, and um, halving, and quartering, and digging, and all sorts of things. And, um, and there's still more to go. Well, you've been a busy bee, my dear. I have been a busy bee. Mm. So, uh, Lucy's joining us later. Yes. Um, Matt's going to be going Dutch. Yes. Do you know uh, what you're going to be talking about this week, Matt? Just to give everybody a bit of a hint. I'm going to go on another excursion and tell you where you can go on a staycation in the Netherlands. Mm -hmm. Nice. Very nice. So last week we were in the Wadden Islands, if I recall correctly. So let's see where he sends us this week. Maybe, maybe there's a nature tip in there for me for this weekend. Oh, well, I Perfect. believe that people can go a little bit further afield now if they want to, because the flights are going to be starting at uh, Maastricht Airport. That's right, indeed. So stay tuned in the news. I have some updates for you guys. Oh, I say. It's just I, I read your mind. I know. <laughs> Look at that. <laughs> Actually, I had to think of Matthew earlier this week. Uh, of course, I always think of Matthew, but I had to think of him particularly because the thing I learned this week Where's that I didn't going? Know, I know the thing I learned this week that I didn't know last week has a Welsh connection. Oh, oh I know. I'm rather embarrassed to say, and this is true. I learned this week that Richard Burton is from Wales. Yes. I know. Richard Hello? Burton. Oh, Burton. I know. I mean, you know that? I didn't. I honestly didn't. I mean, How God rest did you not know that? But that's what I'm telling you. This is why it's kind of embarrassing. <laughs> I really didn't know. I thought he was a Brit or from somewhere. I didn't oh know. Oh, my goodness. He's one of the most famous Welshmen ever. I didn't know. I knew, I knew he was married to Elizabeth Taylor. No relation. And apart from that, that was it. Shocking. Isn't it terrible? <laughs> and he's from a place called Pond Reduven. Is that right, Matt? <laughs> I'd have to see it written down. I don't know. <laughs> It's in Glamorgan, apparently. It says oh. Pontry Duffin. Pontrifidin. I don't know. Well, Sorry. anyway. There you go. But that's what I learned this week. It's and it pronounced think of Smithfield. Any of our Welsh uh, viewers out there uh, are tuning in at the moment, uh, maybe they could uh, give Tracy a hint as to whether Please. she's just pronounced a beautiful place in Wales or whether she's just sworn at everybody and told them what ugly <laughs> I'm are. so sorry, but I think Pontry Dufin, I think that's it. So I, I'm I'm going with that. Open to correction from our our viewers in the in, in Wales. Let us know. Well Angela's just joined us from the UK. Hello Angela. I know she's not from Wales, so she's not gonna be able to help us at all. No, probably not. I bet well, she's I'm I can't help you either. <laughs> <laughs> but you see the pickle we're in? <laughs> We need some more Welsh people to discuss this at length, obviously. We do. Uh, he's from Pontry pon Duffins, you know? Yeah, that's quite right. Oh, no, um, well done. Yay! It's that Celtic connection, perhaps. Yeah. There you are. But there you go. That was my fun. few Celtic connections in my time. <laughs> Have you now? <laughs> I'm saying nothing. I know one story and I'm keeping some. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Uh, the Greek uh, tennis player. She said she's a Greek tennis player and figured they're not as similar as I initially thought. <laughs> <laughs> not to worry, Matthew. Will, I still think he looks like Will Wheaton from Big Bang Theory in any case, so you can always fall back on that. I don't know who any of these people are. Oh, Matthew! <laughs> you're going to look like a tennis player. We need one that we can actually pronounce the name. <laughs> well, here's a name. Here's a name I can pronounce. It's Susan Marshall, who's actually tuned in from Australia. 
It's late. Ten hours of us, aren't they? We are. We are perfect for insomnia. It's awesome. <laughs> Oh, how wonderful. I wonder where in Australia she is. Let oh. us know. Talk to us. Talk to us, Susan. Yes. We want to know what time it is. We want to know where you are. We want to know why the hell are you listening to us at this time of the day. Yes. You're well, very welcome. We'll have you on as our guest next week. I just love Australia. <laughs> so, I went there in 2008, and it was still one of my most wonderful experiences ever. So there we are. They are. Oh, you know, we, we have an, we have another uh, um, suggestion that you look like uh, Zverev. So, <laughs> God bless you. I assume you're a tennis player. Are we still? Are we still? Are we still on the tennis theme, Adam? This is what we want to know. I think. I think possibly. Maybe we need to stop playing tennis, Matt. This is where it's all I, going. I know a limited number of tennis players. I probably know like five. So I. I don't and know you what, don't look like any of those, <laughs> because I'm sorry, even in a really good bad light, you don't look like Martina Navratilova. <laughs> no, he doesn't look like Martina Navratilova. No. <laughs> Goodness. Anyway, me. I think right. it's probably time for us to chill a little bit, um, relax, maybe yes, get into a zen mode, ready. put the kettle on, put your feet up, oh. because it is time for us to dig deep <laughs> breathe get, get, get on with it just tell me when to push the button oh, woman okay it's time for this day in history <laughs> <This> day. <laughs> i was trying to build an atmosphere <laughs> honestly so today it is thursday the 18th of june yeah. and on this very day in 1839 the dutch prince willem alexander Wed's his cousin. Oh, good lord! I know, Princess Sophia. I see. That's what right. they did in those days. They wed their cousins. Mind you, everybody was related in one way or another throughout Europe uh, uh, in those days. So true enough. Yes, they were all related one way or another. Now, it was a very slow news day on this day in 1892. Macadamia nuts were first planted in Hawaii. Aloha! <laughs> on this very day. Right. I do like a macadamia nut, though, I must say. Do you like a macadamia nut? I Matt, do. are you a macadamia person? I, I can't say I know what it tastes like. I think I've had one before, but I don't know. Well, that helps. It, it, you know, you can always rely on Matthew for a, a good feedback. <laughs> Oh, Actually, like any other than that. that the one. first amusement pier opens in Atlantic City, New Jersey. Now, ah, AC. They, they may have the first one, but where I was born has the longest one. It's had the longest one in the world for a very, very long time. The so longest the what? Amusement pier. Oh, right. In South End on Sea. South End on Sea. South End, <laughs> where I was born. Good old South End. And they've tried to burn it down. When I say they, I don't actually know who they are, but it has been burnt down several uh, times. But it's still the longest one. So, um, uh, but that's, that's a very traditional kind of uh, seaside entertainment that you will find around the UK, isn't it? Is it like Blackpool? Like, yeah. uh, South End is nothing like Blackpool. Oh. <laughs> is it like Brighton? Uh, it's definitely not like Brighton. I'm out. <laughs> South End used to be the place where uh, years and years, many, many years ago, the Victorians used to travel to uh, South End for, for a day out. And it was the, the place to go. And it was for many, many years, um, even up until sort of uh, the mid uh, 20th century, that would still be, sort of, oh, yeah, we're going to South End. The Londoners go to South End, go to South End. And then it kind of stopped probably mm. in the 60s um and uh, it's been going downhill ever since <laughs> right yes mm. it's um i mean it's 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 it, there's still lots to do there from from uh, the last time i was there there all seems to be lots going on but i think lots of other places seem to have moved on a bit which is what i'm going to do now because on this day in 1928 american aviator amelia earhart she became the first woman to fly across the atlantic ocean uh landing at Bury Port in Wales. Ah, Borida. 
keeping with the Welsh theme. Yeah. In 1948, on this day, the UN Commission on Human Rights uh, adopts the International Declaration of Human Rights. Mm -hmm. And in 1959, the governor of Louisiana, Earl K. Long, is committed to a state mental hospital. He responds by having the hospital's director fired and replaced with one of his mates who proceeds to proclaim him perfectly sane. <laughs> Goodness, well, that's the way to do it, I suppose. That's the way to do it. That's the way to... Who said that catchphrase? That's the way to do it. Who was some oh, that was um, uh, Suti, not not Suti, um, uh, Punch and Judy. Punch and Judy. Anyway, moving on. <laughs> Yeah, try explaining what Punch and Doody is to people who have got no idea. Um, now, this would have been a good day. And on this day in 1967, the closing day of the Monterey International Pop Festival in Southern uh, California, had appearing Jimi Hendrix, Janis Joplin, The Who, oh. and Otis Redding. Whoa, that's a lineup. There's a lineup for you. <laughs> and this week, I would have been going to Pink Pop. Oh. Also, so I'm feeling a little, I'm feeling a bit emotional. At the moment, because I'm not doing pink pop. Yeah. But that would have been a hell of a lineup for Terrible. sure. In 1989, on this very day, John Wayne Bobbitt married Lorena L. Gallo, which is probably something he regrets. Because for those of you out there who have no idea who John Wayne Bobbitt is, his <laughs> wife Lorena chopped off his willy in 1993, a mere four years later. Yes. Yeah. But, but I, I believe he had a, a comeback, so to speak, where he ended up being a, a poor choice of words there, right? We've talked about this before, haven't we? <laughs> Did, didn't he become a porn star? He did. Sorry. Yes, Tracy. <laughs> and, I made myself blush. <laughs> and and, and a, prize, a prize goes to Tracy if she's able to tell us the name of that adult film. I don't know. Oh, I've forgotten. Oh dearie me! Hey, I've forgotten. What what was it, Jason? No, no, I'm going to throw that to the listeners. <laughs> First one with the right answer appears on the show next yeah, week. So any of our listeners uh, or viewers out there, what was the name of the uh, porn film that Jane Wayne, John Wayne Bobbitt, starred in with his remade Willie? We're about Ooh. to get spammed hard. <laughs> oh, <laughs> really which is hard. not the name of the film, by the way. Really hard. Spam hard. Yeah, that would, that would be a good name, wouldn't it? On this day in 2005, David Tennant makes his first appearance as the 10th Doctor in the BBC's uh, Doctor Who. And in 2014, Ian McKellen is awarded an honorary degree by Cambridge University, becoming a Doctor of Letters. I don't actually know what that means. Also that year, King Juan Carlos I of Spain abdicates. Um, and the Spanish throne then goes on to his son, Philippe VI. And in 2016, on this day, the Soyuz capsule returns to Earth with the first British International Space Station astronaut Tim Peake, the Russian Yuri Malenchenko, and the American Timothy Kopra after 186 days. Wow. Actually, I'm just going to quickly divert here because I've just seen Val in the UK. He's just joined us. Uh, good evening, Val. He probably knows the name of the uh, p uh, porn film that John Wayne Bobbitt was in. <laughs> so uh, let actually, me say our, what the name of that is. Val. No, actually, actually, our friend <laughs> Eric Claris actually figured it out first. Oh, <laughs> really? What, what was it called? It's called Franken Penis. Franken Penis. There you go. Oh, who could forget that? That up <laughs> some images, doesn't it? It does actually, and they're all rather scary. Yeah. <laughs> And finally, on this day uh, in 2019, the sex-changing Australian bush tomato study published in journal <coughs> Vito Keys details how Salonum plasticexum can change from male to female to hermaphrodite. Wow. Well, a tomato. Oh. Well, there you are. This is what you okay. need, a sex-changing tomato. Though. Let's run through some birthdays. We've yes. got, on this day, 1941, Delia Smith, the British cook oh. and television presenter. Who Saint Delia. Saint Delia. Mm. Um, she was born on this very day. 
The wonderful Paul McCartney, former Beatle uh, and Wings member, was born in 1942. Isabella Rossellini, the Italian, uh, I think is wonderful. Fabulous. She was born in 1952. Alison Moyet, the uh, pop star from Essex, yes. born in 1961, whose actual first name is Genevieve. Did you know oh, her? No. I know. <laughs> And finally, in 2006, on this very day, Countess Zaria, the king's niece, was born on this day. Right. That's the King Willem Alexander of the Netherlands, his niece, is having her birthday today. Happy Countess birthday. Countess Zaria. Happy birthday, one and all. Happy birthday to anybody celebrating a birthday today. Hope you're all having a lovely day, whatever it is. We do. Happy birthday, birthday to you. And there is this day in history. Well done, dear. Thank you very much. Yay. Yay. Fabulous as always. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm. Val says hi. Hi, Val. Hi, Val. Is Val a male then? He is. Oh, right. What's it? Sort of a Valentine or? It is. Tracy, oh, does, yes. it, does it matter? Well, no, because you would assume it's Valerie, but then it's, he... That can yeah. also be a man's name. Though. We don't know We don't know how this individual identifies, so good evening, individual. I do. <laughs> uh, he's a friend of Joe's, I oh, see. Oh, so, likewise, good evening, individual. I've actually known Val for, oh, 30 years, I would say. Mm. Is he the chap who met you in London and came up from behind you and scared you? No. Right. Right. That's another story. Right. That's another story. Yes, it's That's the Irish guy. Story. The other story. Yes. <laughs> I am. I am. I'm not going to furnish you with stories about Val. We just do not have the time. But, uh... <laughs> <laughs> we got to get him on the show, Joe. He sounds no, really. No, we don't. No, we don't. Val, <laughs> don't even think about it. <laughs> no, he just said yes. I am a man. He definitely is a man. <laughs> Maybe he can be a surprise guest next week for you, Joe. <laughs> no pictures proving that you're a man, Val. Let's keep those ones off the internet. Oh, we are definitely oh, getting spam Lord. now. <laughs> but anyway, I think it's probably time that we found out what's happening in the news, Tracy. Right, well, yes, from all of this excitement to the news, but let's give it a go. <laughs> Thank you, darling. Tracy Taylor. <laughs> Good evening, everyone. It's June 18th, and you're listening to the Maastricht edition on Facebook Live. First, to look at your weekend weather, and it seems cloudy skies are set to continue for the coming days with the risk of thundery showers. Sunday currently looks to be the best of the weekend, staying dry with bright spells and highs of 24. Now, moving to your bulletin for tonight. In international news, U.S. President Donald Trump's former national security advisor, John Bolton, has accused him of seeking. China's help to win re-election. The claim has been denied by the Trump administration who are seeking an injunction to block publication of a book by Mr. Bolton that is due out next week. French President Emmanuel Macron travelled to London today for talks with British Prime Minister Boris Johnson. It's Macron's first foreign trip since the coronavirus pandemic began. And Vera Lynn, the British forces sweetheart whose songs helped raise morale in World War II, has died at the age of 103. Lynn was best known for performing for British troops during World War II in countries including India and Burma. Moving to domestic news, and the Netherlands, Germany, France and Italy have collectively signed a contract with AstraZeneca for 300 million doses of a coronavirus vaccine that is still in development. The vaccine has been developed by the University of Oxford in the United Kingdom and is one of just a few vaccines in clinical evaluation phase. And in local news tonight, as of July 1st, Ryanair will begin operating routes from Maastricht Aachen Airport to Bari in Italy and Alicante and Barcelona in Spain. Corindon will also start flying from Maastricht as of June 30th, with destinations to Bulgaria. The airlines and airports will be taking appropriate safety measures, including obligatory online check-in, limited hand baggage and compulsory face masks. Lifestyle magazine Chapeau and L. Ain are looking for the loveliest terrace in Limburg. The five finalists have been announced and here in Maastricht, Restaurant Noon is on the list. You can vote for your favourite up to 3pm this Sunday. The winner will be announced on June 29th.
And finally tonight, the Natur Monument is able to start tours and events again as of July 1st. On Sunday, July 19th at 2 p.m., you can join their Forest Ranger on a beautiful walk in St. Petersburg in search of butterflies. The walk will be conducted in accordance with RIVM guidelines and will take about two hours. The program is tailored to an adult audience and offers explanations in both English and Dutch. You can reserve your ticket online. And that's it for tonight. For more local news, you can follow the RTV Maastricht News in English Facebook page and Instagram pages. If you are a local business, be sure to check out the Support Your Local Business South Limburg Facebook page, a joint initiative between Hashtag Maastricht and the Maastricht Edition. And don't forget that you can always find us on the Maastricht Edition Facebook page and follow us on Instagram. For all the details, check out the themaastrichtedition.nl. Yay! There we are. Yes. Yes, so we can fly away. Hi, yes. Yeah. Well, we feel like risking guys, it. It doesn't, doesn't appeal to me at all getting on a plane at the moment. No. Uh, no. no. Like, you have to wear a mask the entire time as well. And that's you awesome. do. Yeah, you do. I think uh, I'm still having high hopes to travel home to Ireland this year, but I'm, I'm targeting November, December time when kind of hopefully maybe things have become a little bit more common and normal. But uh, indeed, but it's nice for folks who really feel the need to get away. You have options for Spain and Italy, always beautiful locations, and Bulgaria as well, which has a lot to offer. So uh, at least here locally, there are some options uh, coming you along. You also get the train from Maastricht. It's quite well connected there to Belgium. Yes, that's very true indeed. And now that Germany is uh, kind of reopening, the train is a is a handy option, isn't it? Yeah. We're going at the end of the, at the beginning of July. We're going to go to Germany on the train. We're going to go exactly. to Koblenz. Oh, oh it's nice beautiful. there. I like it there. Yes, we had a weekend really there. Nice. Very now cool. I John, believe we have somebody joining us. Not one, but two. <laughs> good evening, Lucy and Katrina from Meet Maastricht. Hello. 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 Oh, this is so exciting. <laughs> How are you, are you ladies? Both, can you see both of us? I think well, can we can see, see your chins. bottom of your head. Yeah. yeah. Your chins look great. <laughs> there we are. <laughs> we, we can sort of see you. How are you, ladies? Um, yeah, well, we, we are pleased we are connected to you because it's... Um, <laughs> It was it was absolute slapstick here trying to get that arranged, oh and, uh, and me and me and me dodging the th thunderstorms trying to get here, and then uh, having to get in all sorts of auxiliary forces to try and get the technical site working. <laughs> so yeah. Well, yes. Congratulations. You're doing a marvelous job. <laughs> If you could see the setup, I don't know if that's what you'd say. No, no, no. As long as we can see your chins, that's all we need. We're absolutely fine with chins. Well, we can hear you, it's great. It's fine. And we can hear you guys. Oh, fabulous. So for um, any of our viewers out there who maybe are not familiar with uh, Meet Must Streets, maybe, uh, Lucy, you could just uh, give them a quick outline about uh, what must, uh, Meet Must Street is all about. I will, I will make it very quick. Meet Maastricht is exactly uh, what it says. It is an invitation to meet Maastricht. So we uh, keep trying to think of new programs, new ideas, new ways of meeting the city. And the focus is always on uh, cultural history and on uh, heritage. But we, we take the theme pretty loosely. Just before you called in, we were discussing beer and bread <laughs> workshops. So, you know, Fantastic. it's... Yes, of course. Part of heritage, right? What a great combination. <laughs> Where do I sign it? Not, not necessarily at the same time. but uh, We did yeah. meet someone who made beer from bread, didn't we? They came on the show. Yeah. Pika yeah. Brown beer. Yeah. That's people, yes. Yeah. And uh, what, we're, what we're doing right now in these uh, weird, weird, weird corona times, of course, our entire spring and summer program, uh, yeah, disintegrated. Yeah. So we had to we had to really think of something, and what we've been doing for uh, pretty much right from the beginning, right? Yeah. Of the lockdown, we've uh, we've turned to um, the digital world, and we started making podcasts. 
Well, so another big congratulations to you, Lucy, because I can imagine when, the, when you first started or even came up with that idea, I suspect all the blood drained from your body and you thought, oh, my God, no. <laughs> <laughs> not me, not this. <laughs> but it, yeah, but it's, it, is, it is thanks to Katrina that this is all working. I mean, you know, I'm a historian, I'm a storyteller, so I will dive into the content and be happy as Larry. <laughs> And Katrina has been schooling herself at record pace, uh, making sure it gets on the internet. So please yeah, tell so everybody. So I'm just good at Googling how to do a podcast. <laughs> <laughs> My key skill set. <laughs> yeah, no, it's been a learning curve. I've never done a podcast before, but uh, this is the first time we're recording anything uh, together. Usually we're both in our separate houses uh, and we've worked out a way to record and get things out which has been yeah really positive and the feedback's been really nice as well and yeah. so if you we have 15 episodes now so there's lots of things for people to listen to if they can yeah. they really are wonderful I've personally listened to a two or three of them and honestly they're so well put together and so informative and actually quite you think okay I'm going to listen to another one I gotta listen to another <laughs> one and they're, they're, it's very informative if you need to know fun facts or little historical bits about Maastricht and it's really done in a very nice easy to follow way so absolutely high, high recommendations and well done to both of you thank you thank you, thank you. Let, let me mention the source material we're using this is this is for all your listeners who are learning Dutch or who can you know I have mastered the language to begin with for each episode we concentrate on a place in the city that is not normally publicly accessible uh, so even if we would be doing walks we wouldn't be visiting these places so mm. and I'm telling everything there is to tell about these places on the basis of a wonderful series of little booklets they are tiny they are called Maastricht's Silhouettes, the Silhouettes of Maastricht. And I think they're they're into number 75, 76, something like that. They they started publishing these somewhere in the early 80s. So they've been going forever. And 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 it is it is consistently very high quality. So they have they have absolute experts from the historical field writing these things. And then they score the archives for uh, the illustration material to go along with. So, you know, if there is if there is a particular place, building, site in Maastricht that you want to know more about, mm. grab one of those booklets. They, I don't think that the market will ever allow this treasure house to be translated into English. So I feel honoured, in a way, <laughs> of, you know, passing it on to a new audience like that. But, you know, anybody whose Dutch is good enough, get those little booklets. Mm. And do you think you'll do all 75 on the podcast? <laughs> Who knows, Matt? Who knows? <laughs> we'll have to see. Well, there's no reason why not, for goodness sake. I mean, there's uh, <laughs> there, there's so much to learn about my street. Um, for yeah. anybody who is uh, new to the area who doesn't realise how much uh, history there is here, I mean, there's uh, the, there's yeah. enough to talk about for the next ten years oh. easily, I suspect. Oh, easy. Yeah. Yes, and we we started out with the podcast more or less as an emergency measure. You know, there were there were, there were not going to be any group events for the foreseeable future, and we wanted we wanted our audience to you know still realize we were alive mm -hmm. <laughs> so that that's why we came up with this as a as a sort of in-between solution but you know mm -hmm. we're enjoying them yeah uh, people are enjoying them so yes exactly why not make 75 <laughs> <laughs> so so what is happening with the, with the other tours though um are, are you are you going to start resuming those and, I, and also i seem to a little birdie told me that some bikes were involved in some tours as well yeah. Yes, I am. I, I am not. I don't feel. I don't feel safe enough yet, and I guess that would apply to uh, quite a few people to uh, say, "Oh, right, okay, there's twenty of us, and I will bunch you all up together, and we'll go and walk the busy streets of the city centre." You know, it just doesn't mm -hmm. feel appropriate at the moment. But at the same time, you know, you, you, you know what I'm like. I want to be out there and I want to yeah. be telling stories to actual people. Yeah. Uh, Katrina and me have been doing this in our separate houses and it works very <laughs> well, but it feels so weird. I mean, you need faces. Yes. You need, 
you need reactions. I mean, talking to, talking to you guys like this is ridiculous yeah. too. Because <laughs> you're such you're such tiny things on a on a tiny screen. I can't really see you. So <laughs> anyway, <Wave>. um, <laughs> yeah, wait. Hi, man. So uh, I was I was looking for an for an in between format, something mm -hmm. with more physical space, mm -hmm. and then why not get on a bike uh, with a smaller group and go and explore uh, parts of the city that you would normally not walk. Mm. So what I'm doing now is making little circles all around the center of Maastricht. And we're basically circling all the way around the city with these little circles. Do you know what? I hate to say this, Lucy, but it seems extremely obvious that you would have a biking tour in the Netherlands. Yeah. Yes, yes, and that that too, of course. Now we have been we have been talking about bike tours before, but now it seemed it seemed a good time to to uh, actually design a series of them, to uh, yeah tide us over the into and out of lockdown phases. Yeah, mm. and it's uh, it's quite enjoyable to do, and I and you know and I and of course they they, they each of them covers a, a, a particular geographical area. So we've done two on the north and the northeastern side of the of the town. Uh, this weekend we will be going to the western part of the city, which is interesting because that is pretty much contemporary. Mm -hmm. So that uh, that tour will deal with the post World War Two uh, neighborhoods that were built uh, on the basis of a, of, a, of a sort of unifying idea of urban development. So this is how you're supposed to design. Uh, uh, healthy, wholesome living quarters mm -hmm. for people. So this this built up environment very much reflects a mentality of a particular time period, which is not. This is not the way we tend to think of modern cities. Sure. We, I'm really we, we, sad I don't live in Maastricht anymore. I'd love to join you, Lucy, for these tours. Sounds fascinating. Yeah, it is. It is very interesting. We're closing the sales for this for this particular uh, tour tonight at nine o'clock. So if you oh. want to join. Uh, so, they take they take place from uh, two o'clock until mm -hmm. four o'clock, and the meeting place is Cumulus at the Herbenestraat. Mm -hmm. So we're meeting sort of on the edge of the old town, and then we'll start cycling into the new town, so to speak. And special feature: this is also where mm -hmm. we have a special prize. The guide is not me, oh. but ah. but but a guy who <laughs> talks like me. That's you know, <laughs> So there, there'll be there'll be no difference as far as that's concerned. He is um, a curator at Centre Ceramique. His oh. name is Jus, his name is Jus He has uh, appeared on one of our podcasts as well because we invited him to do the special edition on seventy five years liberation. So oh. you can hear him. You can hear him there. You can <laughs> talk to my talks a mile a minute and has an entire <laughs> library in his head and you know so well, he's from Maastricht as well. I, he's a local yeah, yeah of course it's, excellent yeah. stuff so if anybody wants to join uh, uh, any of these tours um, how do they go about it <laughs> well you can find us on Facebook and each of the tours has its own Facebook event so if you just go to meet Maastricht and events you'll find them there you can also go to our website and if you just press on buy tickets up the top all the tickets that are on sale at the moment will come up as well. So nice. They're very reasonably priced tickets. Very. Yeah. Well, these ones, these special ones, because we have a special guest, uh, we these ones are ten euros. So yes. a bargain for Absolute a nice two-hour bargain. Hour bargain. Yeah. And if uh, anybody wants to listen to the podcast, how do they go about that, Katrina? <laughs> Uh, same same deal. Uh, you can find lots of things on Facebook where I've posted about the podcast. It's probably super easy to find links and things. We have a YouTube channel, uh, which again you can just search Meet Maastricht on the YouTube channel. We're on Spotify, Anchor, Apple Podcasts. Just Meet Maastricht everywhere. The YouTube videos. I would like to give a special shout wow. out. Wow! I tell you what, like, make... you're spreading yourselves around <laughs> quite a bit. <laughs> <laughs> but they have lots of pictures yeah. for um the podcast is you know an audio medium but because right. we're talking about places it's a good chance to share some visuals as well uh right. so i add lots of pictures uh each episode also has a page on our website if you want to look under podcasts there's heaps of pictures and extra information Fantastic. and nice little nuggets and things as well 
Yeah. Brilliant. Well, you're doing a sterling job, girls. Thank it's you. been so <laughs> lovely to see you. It really has. And we'll put all your details onto our Facebook page and onto Instagram, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Um, all the best. Um, hopefully, it won't be long before uh, we're actually um, sitting next to each other. And, yeah. Uh, it, it, we need to do some hugging, girls. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We do. <laughs> Thanks a lot for having yes, us. Thank you so much. Lovely yes, to see bye. you, girls. Take care. Bye. bye. <laughs> so oh, that was nice. Lovely yeah. guests. Always such lovely energy from um, yes. Maastricht. Absolutely. And anybody out there who um, maybe, well, do you know what? I say recently joined Maastricht, but even people who have been living in Maastricht for a long time, you're yeah. going to discover so many new interesting facts about Maastricht if you join these tours um, and the podcast as well. I mean, Lucy, honestly, she she's amazing. An encyclopedia, she, that woman. She is. Yes. She is. So um, <laughs> she's Lucy Encyclopedia Williams. <laughs> she is, for sure. Coincidence. Um, Weird. I know. <laughs> and while that was going on, Barry joined us from Spain. Hello, Barry, Claire, Mandy, Caroline. They're all in the house. Hello, my lovelies. Hi there. Hello. Nice to have you here. Um, you're just in time for Matt Goes Dutch. Oh, oh. oh how lucky for them. My girl's so, Dutch. <laughs> Thank My you. girl's Dutch. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for the intro, Joe. So, yeah, you can tell I've been practicing. <laughs> <laughs> so this week, we are going to the Zeus uh, Riviera. So <laughs> the, the, the Zeus uh, Riviera. I don't know if I'm saying that right. I think it's very vaguely correct. <laughs> So who needs the French Riviera when you have the Zeus Riviera instead? So have anyone been? No. No. So it's in well, Zeeland. I haven't been to the French Riviera for quite some time. Either, so. <laughs> so it's in Zeeland, which is in the west of the country, southwest. Um, uh, vaguely, I don't have a map. I think it's south. <laughs> um, and it. It, it's home to the Zeus of Riviera, which has one of the best beaches in the Netherlands. It's considered one of the, the prettiest, the, one of the ones that's the most sung about, and it's called Zoetelande. Ah. And I've seen pictures of it. It looks great. I really want to go now. And it's one of the only beaches in the country that faces south, hence the name Zeus of Riviera. I'm just going to keep saying it. Yes, and <laughs> it's also a bit warmer than other beaches in the country. So it's a bit like you could be like, abroad somewhere with nice weather but in the Netherlands so it's a great place to go if you want to get away from where you live but don't want to leave the country that's a good place to go and while you're there you can try some traditional Zeus of fish restaurants Ooh. because the area is well known for freshly caught local fish and has some really great seafood I think there's like a traditional mussel festival every year as well um, and you can also have some great views of the coast while enjoying a glass of locally produced wine because like Limburg, South Limburg, Zeeland around that area also produces wine because the weather's a bit warmer and the sea stops the frost. So you can try some local wines. Nice. Um, and you can also try some local beers because they also produce lots of beers in the area. So it's a really good place to go like, you know, Batendra or abroad in Italy or France or something. Uh -huh. And if you go during this nice weather now, you could be there. Who knows? Just pretend, like imagine, just sit there. Until you go to wine. get something to eat. <laughs> yeah. Oh, <no. laughs> and if you go to, to Zutalanda, your visit will not be complete without a visit to the Monacan verbal Strauss Vogel, what does it say? Ostrich farm. Ostrich. Ah. Hurrah! Hurrah. And apparently in this ostrich farm, you can buy the eggs, you can buy yes. the meat, you can buy the leather goods made of ostrich skin. You can buy, the, you can buy every, every element of the bird you can buy at this place. Um, well, I know about this because a friend of mine's fur parents uh, have an ostrich farm and it turns out that every single part of the bird gets used for something, including, the f I think it's the feet get made into soap. Really? Yeah, they sold soap. Oh, that there you right. go. Good. Well, well. Yes. Well, very good. That's a tip for the weekend, depending yeah. on the weather. Maybe next weekend is better. It's going to get better. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, go get yourself some feet soap. 
<laughs> no, I, I can't endure spying the feet so honestly. <laughs> I'm well, a I, I, I don't think it smells of ostrich feet. <laughs> no, but it's the principle of the poor animal, you know. <laughs> oh, dear, oh, dear. But go to the sea and have the wine and the beer. That's all and right. Check yes. out Muscle Fest. There you go. See, she's got her priorities sorted. I'm yeah. telling you. You see? <laughs> and you, he, he mentioned the Muscle Fest, right? Yeah. The mussels. Yeah. Well, I quite like the mussels and French fries. <laughs> yeah. What, wait, uh, what, like the, oh, seafood, seafood, sorry, I don't know where I was there. No, I haven't got a clue what you were doing I apologize now. Not to worry, it's nearly at the top of the hour, this is what happens in the last five minutes really, isn't it? You know what, I last think five minutes, actually yeah. it would be good, a good assignment for Matt to go to these places as a roving reporter and do a report. I'd be happy to check it out, but I don't really want ostrich soap to be honest. You'd have to be careful, okay. then, you? Let's, case... let's take ostrich soap out of the equation <laughs> and just focus on, on the beer and the wine. Okay, yeah, sure. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> it looks like he's up for it, just as long as he doesn't get followed around by people thinking he's a famous tennis player. <laughs> Matt well, you the beer and the wine. That could work. I mean, that's true. I bet if you buy a tennis racket. <laughs> with, the, with the cover and everything and you just walk around with that people will come up and ask for your autograph I, I, we should try a social experiment <laughs> project for the weekend I'll let you know what happened next week <laughs> although that's not very socially responsible at the moment because if they no. come for, I don't know how, how, how do you do the sort of I'd have to, they'd have to put it on the ground and then he'd pick it up and sign and put it back oh god that's a hassle no don't, don't bother yeah. Yes, that I know. That turned out to be a right pain in the backside. That could be, probably literally as well. What? Oh dear, oh dear. Never mind. So, okay. um, Tracy, you got any titty bitties for us this week? I do, but first I have to do a song. Uh oh. Ready? Daddy. Da 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 da. Oh. Da 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 da. Da 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 da. Oh, who can forget this world famous tune? So. I think this has got something called Brazil. Yes. <laughs> yes, and the reason I, I do this little ditty is because I want to speak a little bit about Brazil and specifically a new company that's opened up here in Maastricht. And it, yes, and it's actually a company that opened up during the lockdown. Oh! I know, which is really a kind of testament to how much uh, these ladies believe in their product. Now, if you like cuisine from Brazil and just tasty comfort food in general, then a big shout out to the two lovely ladies from Delhi Minas, Erica and Elisa who have joined together their sisters and they're combining their love of cooking and food with these yummy dishes and everything is available for order online so we'll put their instagram uh, details on our post after the show so check Fantastic. it out and enjoy Lovely. secondly i have we have to do guys big congratulations we had a former guest called miguel who's oh, from yeah. San Yes, remember him? Fabulous hair. Yes. Um, yes. <laughs> um, and he was from Sandbox Music Lab. And he's only he's only gone and won first prize in an international piano competition. Oh. Bravo! Yes, it was the 24th edition of the Pro Piano Romania competition, which was fully kind of converted to an online competition because of Corona. And it was held on the 13th and 14th of June, which is quite recent. So bravo, Miguel. Fantastic. And one more. Um, a friend of the show, Denis from Hashtag Maastricht. Yep. He's not Hi, naked. Denis. Yeah, Denis, he's nominated uh, local drag queen Delicious for a haul pin, which is part of an initiative of Visit Maastricht. And Delicious was nominated for beating the odds and continuously supporting the LGBTQ community during Corona crisis with some live streams and so on. And a presentation will be awarded tomorrow at 5 p.m. during a live stream of COC Limburg. So that's... Yeah, exactly. I've seen some pictures of Delicious D and uh, she is gorgeous, absolutely gorgeous. And what a fantastic yeah. name. Yeah. I'm delicious. <laughs> yes, cool. Yes. <laughs> yeah, great stuff. Well, that's that's brilliant news. Absolutely brilliant. So we can live stream this tomorrow so we can we can watch it actually happening. Five o'clock till six. Brilliant stuff. Excellent. Now, uh, before we toddle off, um, you do have to ask me a question. Oh, I know. I no, know. No, we don't. 
<laughs> yeah, go on, go on, ask me a question because I love this one. Joe, yes. what, what do you know this week that you didn't know last week? Well, I found out <laughs> there's a word called strubbly. And oh. strubbly is a word to describe messy hair. No way. Yes. Strubbly. Strubbly. S-T-R-B-L-Y. My hair is all strubbly. You're quite strubbly, Matthew, yes. No, not at all. You're not strubbly enough. I think it's more sort of like a a, a, a bedhead kind of thing. Uh, <laughs> what what well, led you to discover this word, Joe? Well, uh, she, she did her roots this week, so that's probably got something. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> and now the nation, nay, the globe I a, knows. I had a, had a landing strip uh, uh, going on here. <laughs> And unfortunately, at my age, it's more of a, of a grey landing strip on my head. So, uh, yeah. not attractive. No, I know. Not attractive at all. Not attractive. But it's hey. gone now. It's gone. See? No. See? Hair, it's gone. Hair looks fabulous, darling. Mm-hmm. I like Thank this you. colour on you. Yeah. It doesn't look strubbly, does it? It does not look strubbly at all. Oh, no, I think the word strubbly is lovely. I like strubbly. Strubbly's um, good. It sounds so like strubbly. Like strubbly. Hashtag strubbly's lovely. Strubbly, love, lovely, strubbly. No, oh, God. Lovely, strubbly. There what you have go. I started? There you go. Oh, that's going in the post after the show. Oh, <laughs> fantastic. Lovely, strubbly. Lovely, <laughs> strubbly. <laughs> I think it's our new theme word. Fabulous. Yep, noted. Totally. <laughs> what have I done? All right. Well, that's it, I think, guys. Yeah. I think we've come to the end Already. of the show. I know. Indeed. So thank you very much to uh, Lucy and uh, Katrina from Meet Maastricht. Thank you, ladies. Yes. Um, we shall be putting all their details on our Facebook and Instagram posts uh, uh, later on after the show. Uh, thank you for everybody who joined us this evening from uh, the UK, Australia. from Spain, from Australia. Australia. Uh, even had a couple Ireland. from Maastricht, I believe. Oh, Ireland. 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 And, uh, and all the way from, yeah, from oh, Australia and under. Yeah, no, no. Um, Good day. It's been lovely having you all join us. Thank you to RTV. Um, for, and we'll see you all again next week. Hope you have a lovely week, whatever it is that you're doing. And we shall see you then. Bye, Bye. guys. Ciao, ciao. Bye.